Hello YouTube, this is Rhino Dan. And I had an opportunity to go out and test drive two electric motorcycles. I'm going to give you my first impression and what I liked about them, what I didn't like about them, and everything else. In this video, I was given the opportunity to test ride from Contra Costa Power Sports. They were very awesome. They were very generous. I told the sales manager what my intentions were and he let me test drive two of their best bikes, the most expensive motorcycles. I'm very happy for this opportunity. So right off the bat, the electric motorcycles are very quiet. Now for a lot of people that ride, that use sound as a safety feature, it's gonna be very hard for them to convert over to electric bike. But I also know that if you get speakers, you can emulate any type of engine sound you want. This is a new concept, BMW, Toyota, Ford, all of these other car companies have been doing it for a long time. They'll pump in engine noise into the cabin and they've been doing that for a while to emulate a V8 or whatever engine sound they want. So this isn't anything new and it can be done with an electric bike very easily. So let's get on the meat and potatoes of what makes this bike really awesome. First of all, the power delivery on these motorcycles by far is the smoothest I've ever had on any vehicle I've ever driven or ridden. No gears to go through, extremely linear power delivery, very predictable, amazing. And I can't say like how smooth it is enough. Like I've driven automatics from BMW, from all different car manufacturers and none of the automatics can hold a dime to this car, I mean, this motorcycle right here. This motorcycle is so awesome. The smoothest of the engine is one of the biggest draws for the electric bikes. You can't beat it. No motorcycle can compete with the smoothness of these electric bikes. Now, people are gonna be worried about the engine braking. It does happen a little bit, but it's not much. You might scrub off a few miles per hour, but it's not like as drastic as a gas motorcycle would be. And the reason being is that a gas motorcycle has a transmission and an engine, and both those right there work in unison to create engine braking. Despite not having engine braking, the bike did stop pretty easily and that wasn't really an issue for me. So here's a Supermoto. It's a good looking bike. I really like the way that these bikes looked and everything else. And they did a good job with the aesthetics of the motorcycles. These motorcycles were not cheap. I didn't feel like anything was going to uh, fall off or anything was loose. And I think they did a really good job on the construction and the build quality. It wasn't like a Chinese knockoff or the other crap. You get generic brands, you get people try to save money on. These were not cheap bikes. They used good components, good brakes. I want to talk about the brakes here in a minute. The brakes on these bikes gave me chills how good they were. I was so impressed with the Naked Bikes brakes that I barely touched it and it just was throwing me forward. And for a single rotor, not a dual rotor, but a single rotor to have that kind of braking power was amazing. I couldn't, cannot tell you how jealous I was that these brakes were so good. My R3 brakes were so crappy compared to these brakes. I was just like, man, I want these rotor and these brakes on my R3 like now. It was just really good brakes. And that just goes to show like the build quality and the components. The suspension work on them was great too. And they did a really good job on handling and turns and everything else. And even though I'm a bigger rider, it handled my weight beautifully which means for your little riders out there, it's gonna do good for you too. In the stop and go traffic like I am right now, these bikes were fantastic, they were beautiful. No clutch work, no gears to go through, and no overheating problems. I know a lot of people are gonna be worried about the overheating. I didn't feel any heat from the bike, and I was driving in a 105 degree temperature this day when I was making these videos, and the bikes had no heating problems whatsoever. Even being right here and no movement of air it did great. Another thing I want to talk about too is the acceleration. These bikes can go to 0 to 100 miles per hour in about 3 seconds. The acceleration on these bikes are incredible. Like super fast, super smooth. And I think that right there will be another selling point to some of these riders out there. They don't go much more than 100 miles per hour unfortunately, but they'll get there in a heartbeat, which is really kind of cool. Another thing I want to talk about too is the forks in the suspension. 
was very well composed and I didn't feel like it couldn't handle. And I think that right there gave me confidence in a bike, especially for, these bikes are not light, they're like 400 pounds. So they did a really good job of getting good forks and good shocks in the rear because they really did handle well. And I think that goes to show on the build quality of these motorcycles and the components they use. Right there, one around this corner, no problem, at a good speed. And I'm about to do it again. And I really think that these bikes were beautifully composed and well made. Right here, I did a little acceleration. This acceleration right here did surprise me a lot. I didn't expect it to have a little bit of jump and the front wheel came up a bit and it was actually pretty fun to ride. Here I'm about half throttle and the bike gets about 85 miles per hour pretty quickly at half throttle. I didn't even give it full throttle or nothing. I was just being pretty gentle with the bike. The bikes were not mine and I was on a test drive and I did not want to wreck their expensive bikes. Now let's talk about the bad. The bad is these bikes are expensive. I think this was like a $13,000 motorcycle and one of them was like 16,000. They were, for this kind of money, you can go out and buy like a Honda Fireblade 1000 liter bikes, a BMW S100 RR. All the, both those bikes can do a legit 200 miles per hour and have almost the same amount of torque as these bikes do. And the price of gas isn't really an issue because who cares about spending five or six bucks on gas for a motorcycle and it takes three hours to charge up and you might save yourself a little bit of money, but it's not like a car. You're buying a motorcycle to have fun and who cares about the gas? So there it is. That's the good and the bad. Other than that, the range on these bikes are kind of crappy too. Only 170 miles in the freeway and 110 miles in the streets. Thanks for watching. This is my video and my first impression, thank you.